For this activation, we're down here at Quartz Site, Quartz Fest to be specific. I'm gonna be trying out a different antenna on the back of the camper. But what I'm gonna be trying is the Chameleon Tactical Delta Loop. Let me show you what that's all about. It's a simple little antenna. This can be mounted on the ground for quick deployment, which you're gonna see here in a minute. And it can be put up on top of the camper in, in my RV setup. All right, so here are the parts that we're gonna to put together to begin with. We're gonna take the center V connector, the coupler, I guess it's called, and attach that to, it just threads into the ground spot. It's a pretty solid connection, actually. Once this thing is tight, and I'm just gonna hand tighten it, we're gonna attach the matching unit to one side of the V with the coax connector, the SO239 at the bottom. When you get this set up, on the right side of it, the coax is gonna dangle straight down from either your mast or straight to the ground. Each whip goes on, so this is threaded also for 3 8 which is really handy. Now I'm gonna be setting this up here on the ground. We're gonna set this up a little bit away from the camper. I'm gonna pound this stake into the ground, and then we're gonna actually set this up for real. So I'm gonna take these off and then hammer this in, but I wanted to, sh wanted to show you at least to uh, see how this is set up. You extend these whips out, and then we're gonna attach on the uh, wire that connects the two, which makes the loop. Let me show you what that looks like before we uh, get too far into it. The extra wire, the 25 foot wire comes on this line winder and it's got the two clips, two alligator clips that are going to clip onto the end of the uh, 17 foot mast. So this little loop has its um, little crimp connector on here and that's going to hold the loop in place and we're going to put that on top of the little ball at the end of the whip. Now that's going to keep this thing from coming off, but we need to connect this electrically, and that's what this alligator clip is for. So we take the alligator clip and clip it on the end of the ball, and now we're good to go. Now when you put this up and you extend the whips out, this thing's going to be held in place, and you're going to be golden. So the only tool you're really going to need for this is probably a rubber mallet. Something like this, to where you're not going to ding the metal as you're pounding it into the ground. If the ground is soft enough, I guess you can push it in with your... Uh, hands and then stamp it in with your foot. But this may be hard enough, so I brought this just in case, just for this setup. So I don't want this getting in the way of the campsite. So we've got different trailers out here. People are gonna be walking by and I don't want that to be a hassle. All right, looking at the campground here, there is a lot of room out in this area here. There's tons of space. But the problem with that is I'm standing right here next to the camper, but there's a road. It's not like it's a heavy traveled road. It's not the main road, but people will take shortcuts from one section to the other. So I've got this drive path right here. So I'm thinking the best route for me is without interfering with camp. I'm gonna go here across the creek bed and uh, set up right over here on the other side of this cactus, the saguaro. And it will still give me room to rotate the antenna. It is directional, uh, broadside to the antenna. All right, so I wanna show you the setup here. Setting this up on the ground, we've got the clip set up on the end of the ball along with the little hoop. So the hoop goes on first onto the 17 foot whip. And then this is attached to the 5 to 1 and the V coupler here so that you've got both elements, both 17 foot whips. And I've got both sides of the wire hooked up with the wire set up on the ground. You just got to watch out for bushes. You know, if it's windy or whatever, you don't want to get the wire hooked up in the bush because it will uh, absolutely do it. I noticed one thing here with this being in the ground, the spike, the ground is softer than I thought. So it's spinning around more. So we've got this. That may be a problem later. I don't know. We'll see. But for now, we're all set up and I'm going to extend these whips and I'll show you how this looks. See, now here's a perfect example of uh, why I chose not to put the antenna out in the gully because uh, here was someone looking for a road to go down this way. So it's, uh, it never hurts to get out there and kind of scope out where you're setting up and plan for things like that, where people might walk, where cars might drive, things like that. So you want to keep your antenna out of harm's way and uh, you know, kind of anything that's going to get you hung up. Plan for that. All that's really left to do is to uh, hook up the coax. You know, this thing does not take very long at all. If I wasn't filming and describing to you how I set this up, this would take less than five minutes to set this antenna up. That's pretty fast. I don't need any kind of tree or mast or anything to set that up. So now that it's going, I'm going to get the meter out and let's see what the SWR is. Uh, we have a, an idea of what it should be. So I want to see if it's even close to uh, what it says in the book. 
as we get higher in the band for 40 meters, we're at three to one. Not ideal, but it's not unexpected either. The manual talks about that that's gonna be the case and you're gonna need an antenna tuner. So now let's go to 80 meters. 80 meters is also three to one across the entire band. So it's about what I expect from what the manual says I was going to get out of this. Let's, let's hook this up to the radio now and uh, see how well this thing works as a ground mounted antenna. And I think I'm set up east and west, so hopefully the propagation will be good. Special event station, November 5 whiskey. Kilo 7, Sierra whiskey. K7SW59. Thank you, also 59. Okay, Salt 1, Victor Kilo, is that the entire code? We're going to put this 25 feet up on the Chameleon Cha Portamast. We're going to take the antenna that's over here in the ground and we're going to put this up on the mast. But we're not going to put it up on the mast when the mast is up. I'm going to lay the mast on the ground over here and then we're going to screw this antenna onto it. Then we're going to raise the whole thing up onto the back of the camper. The different times I've set this up, this seems to be the fastest and um, easiest way, safest way for me to get this going. And again, I can't stress this enough, having your antenna in a safe place so it doesn't get run over or impede somebody or get somebody hurt. By me having it off here in the bushes, it's probably gonna save the antenna from damage and it's gonna help people from getting all tangled up. And with the coax unhooked, we're gonna bring this up back over here and I'm gonna hook it up to the mast once we get this thing in the air. We're gonna leave it fully extended because, well, there's no reason for me to, to collapse at all. Making sure I'm not getting stuck in the bushes, we're going to walk this way over here and lay it on the ground. Here's how I'm going to get this all dialed in. We're going to lay this down here on the ground and hook it up to the mast. All I really have to do is to remove the ground spike with my 3 8 threads, lay this on the ground, and then screw the mast topper onto the end of that. That's going to be pretty easy. Make sure while you're doing this, because the antenna mast or the, the whips wiggle around a lot, you want to make sure those clips stay on. You can, by whipping it around, you can make it so that these clips disconnect. So always double check that before you get this thing back up in the air. Now the mast itself is not that heavy actually. If I can carry this around, it's fairly lightweight, but being aluminum, it is heavy duty. Now on the end of this mast topper is my 3 8 threads with this solid connection so I can hook on some other antenna. That's gonna screw onto the bottom of this V coupler with its 3 8 inch thread. So I'm gonna do that and this thing will rotate on the ground so I don't have to rotate the ends of the whips around and have this thing spinning in the air. I can screw this in on the ground making it easier to get this thing up in the air. You want to make sure all your whips are tightened, your uh, matching unit is tight, and your clips are connected and the loops are on before you put this up on the air. I'm not going to hook up the coax because that could get in the way I could trip over that. So it may look pretty heavy, but it really isn't. It just looks like it. And being aluminum is super lightweight. So now that I've got this thing up here in the air, I've got the coax attached to the matching unit. Now I've got the mast hooked up into the trailer hitch mount, the receiver hitch mount. And of course I've got the anti-rattle clip. I found this at Harbor Freight. That keeps this thing from, it just doesn't move around. And I'm using a rubber little RV pad to protect it from the rock so I'm not dropping the mast in all of this stuff. All right, now you should use a ladder when you're doing something like this. It's gonna be safer for you so you don't have to climb up like I did. I'm just really used to climbing up on my ladder and up on the bumper to do this sort of thing. And from here, we're just gonna raise it straight up in the air. Now my, I have to be careful because I got my cell phone booster in the way, but really all I need to do is rotate this, spin it a little bit out of the way and I'm good. The mass gets to a certain point where it stops and if you spin the next module, the next uh, section here, then it will click in place and you're good. I put some white dots on here so that I know that I'm lined up so I can make sure I let go and I know it's securely latched. And just do that with the next one. Now, if you're setting up something like this on a windy day, you're gonna find that whatever way the wind is blowing, you're gonna put some side load on this mast and it's gonna be hard to put up and to take down. So you have to take your opportunities when the wind's blowing and when it stops and make the next move. If I need to spin this around for whatever reason, I can just spin the bottom section and it spins the entire mast. I want this to be east and west 
So I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit more and I'm good to go. Now I'm gonna take the rest of this coax that I've got. I've got 50 feet. I could probably get away with 25 to hook onto my connector here. I'm gonna take the rest of this coax and just do a couple of light loops, a light turns. Just gonna do a couple of light turns around the mast and that's gonna keep the coax in place it's, and it's not gonna blow around when the uh, wind starts picking up and it will pick up out here. So the antenna and the mast handle quite a bit of load. The antenna itself is supposed to be rated for about 40 to 50 miles per hour. The mast I think is rated for a lot higher than that. We've been out here at Quartzfest with quite a bit of wind and this antenna is blowing around. You can see here, this thing is, well, not quite bent in half, but it flexes a lot being that the whips are up the way they are and it's still been good. It's handled this wind load, which is really great. So the way I've got this right now, it's uh, perfect. It'll sit here and it's aiming east and west. It doesn't rotate, nothing loosens on it. So I'm really encouraged by that. I was kind of thinking that with the wind blowing that it was gonna spin this thing around and the antenna might come loose. But so far, it's been really solid. You don't have to guide this mast, by the way. If you're curious about this, with being 25 feet up in the air, as solid as this port mast is, this handles all the wind that's been thrown at it so far. And now with the antenna up there, I'm gonna run the rig expert through and we're gonna see the coverage and how good this is 25 feet up in the air. So we know we're gonna need a tuner for this antenna. At the high end of the band, at uh, four megahertz, we're at three, 3.0. And for 20 meters, it's 2.3 to one across the entire band. Again, we're gonna need a tuner for this, but it may be performing better being 25 feet up in the air. Now, 15 meters is about 1.3, 1 1.23 to one across the entire band. That's getting better for 15 meters. So at the bottom of the band at 28 megahertz, we're starting at 2.0 to one. And by the time we get to 29 megahertz, we're at 2.1 to one. So it's pretty consistent all the way across the band. We may need a tuner for this, we'll see. But at 25 up, feet up in the air, this should perform pretty well. Thank you, Tom, for South Carolina. This is KL7 KK, QRZ. Kilo 7 Sierra Whiskey. Sierra Whiskey in the call. Kilo 7 Sierra Whiskey. Kilo 7 Sierra Whiskey, Jim in Alaska, over. Thanks, Jim. Kevin in Arizona. Thank you, Kevin, for Arizona today. This is KL7 KK, QRZ. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna test here on the Chameleon Tactical Delta Loop is its second configuration, that's a vertical. It's a vertical with a uh, 25 foot wire, that's the counterpoise that comes with it. You're gonna turn that instead of making the loop connection that's up on here. But while we have this up in the wind and it's on the pole, let's uh, see how far we can get by making this a 25 foot vertical up in the air, multi-band. We'll disconnect that and then uh, bring this whole thing down. Hopefully the wind load stops. Right now when the wind, the wind is blowing this direction and when it does it's a huge wind load you can feel the pipe vibrate that makes it hard to drop this thing so if there's any caveat you need to know about that whenever there's a wind load this thing's gonna be hard to put up and put down so you have to wait between breaks between wind or if you're in a non-windy place it just doesn't matter what i really like about this when i compare the mast with uh, whether it's this antenna or another antenna is this and you've got this solid connector on here. It's called the Chameleon Topper. This is attaches to the mast. It's got a three eighths inch thread at the top here and it lets me screw this in. Look at that, I can just rotate. If I hold this still, I can just rotate this. Do this with one hand right here, look at that. And I can tighten this on. If I use two hands, I can make that happen. But since uh, I'm trying to hold the camera in this, I can't. Anyway, that makes it fast, so I don't have to rotate the antenna itself. I'm not taking this and rotating this all up. All I have to do is change it and it slides and it rotates here and the rest of the mast doesn't move. Okay, so I'm gonna take this clip, the alligator clip that's supposed to go on here and, and close it on. I'm gonna attach this to the shield and I'm gonna tape this on to the coax before we put this up in the air. This should give it enough strength, I hope, to pull the radial out and we're gonna run this out to probably the tree. I'll attach some paracord onto uh, the far end. It's so dry out here, it's so hard to talk. This wind just sucks it all out of you. It's crazy. I don't know, it doesn't look like it's gonna hold really solid, but let me see if I can do it this way. This tape's pretty strong.
Is this the way I would do this normally? No, but it's all I have. And I'm coming up with a way to make it work so that uh, we can get on the air. When you're out portable operating something like this, where we've got literally nothing. I mean, it's just, there's just nothing out here. You know, when I fly over with the drone, you can see that there are trailers everywhere. And this is just in the area that we're at. You can go for seven miles and reach a whole nother group of people camping out here. But anyway, back to this, let me get it up in the air. Hopefully the tape holds it on there. I'm gonna have to know not to pull it really hard and I'll go find some paracord. But when it's up in the air and if it's too short, then I've got a problem. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you tie your rope on to uh, radials or whatever you have up in the air to make sure you can still continue on. Otherwise I'll have to tear the whole, the whole thing down and uh, start over. And I don't wanna do that. All right, that wasn't so bad. I've got my 25 feet. It's down here at the ground. I'm gonna run out here to this tree. Again, it's so bright. 80 meters is uh, three to one, all the way across the entire band from bottom to top. And 40 meters, 40 meters is a little bit better. This is, starts at the bottom of the band at 2.2 and then ends up at three to one at the end of the band. I don't know if this will even show up. It's just so bright out here. And this uh, rig expert, even though it's a good analyzer, it just doesn't have a very bright display. 20 meters, 1.5 to 1 at the beginning of the band. It's like flat at uh, 1.5 to 1 all the way across. That's good. And 10 meters is 2.3 to 1 at the beginning of the band. At the high end of the band, it's uh, 3 to 1. But in the end, I think portable operating with this antenna is really nice for this reason. It's simple to put up. There are only a couple of parts, and you can mount this on the ground, making it super simple to get on the air quickly. There's nothing to mess around with. You hook up the 17-foot uh, whips on each side, and I don't always have trees. Like in this environment, you can see here we've got, there's like nothing. This is just dirt and desert, which is cool. It's fun to camp in, and it's fun to operate something like this. Would I recommend an antenna like this? Uh, you betcha. If you are restricted in your ability to get an antenna up in the air, matter of fact, you could use this in an HOA environment. If you're antenna restricted or something like this, it doesn't stick up that high into the air. Matter of fact, if you put this in your backyard, pounded the ground stake into the ground, you now have an Envis antenna for 80 and 40 meters. If I haven't said this before or enough times already, this is not a high performance antenna for DX. You're not gonna be using this for 10, 15, and 20 meters and expecting long distance communications. This is a short and medium range antenna. It's designed to be that way. And for me, it has functioned that way. And so in that, for that reason, I really do enjoy using this antenna. Chameleon did send me this antenna and I appreciate them giving me the opportunity to try this out and show you how this thing works. Well, I hope this information was useful for you. If you wanna see another antenna setup video, check this one out right here. 7-3, see you next time.